Good morning YouTube and happy new year. I'm moving to a new format on this channel where rather than trying to release a video every week, I'm going to release all the videos for the month at the same time. Now the purpose of this is that I want to be able to do a little bit of a deeper dive on certain topics and rather than putting out a video that's 45 minutes or an hour long, I'll just have four or five videos that are each eight to 10 minutes long, and then you can watch them as you want. Uh, hopefully this will allow me to cover topics that previously were difficult to do in a weekly video, and also having a little bit of wiggle room on releasing once a month gives me a little bit more time to stay on track. But what we're gonna be talking about in this month's videos are archival mounting principles. Now, I don't know if there's any word in photography that's thrown around more than the word archival, and a lot of people really don't take the time to understand what it means. Uh, in terms of making prints versus mounting and framing, they're really two different worlds. You can have an archival print, and then by the time you frame it, you no longer have an archival work of art. Now, I'm going to defer to the expert, Chris Pash, on the definition, because I think there's probably nobody in the field that knows more than Chris. Uh, and this is the Mounting and Laminating Handbook. Chris also has a lot of really great articles online. but. In this handbook, Chris says, archival treatment and handling of a piece of fine art refers to the relative permanence of materials used, their ability to remain stable over time and not altering the art's original state. Then a couple lines down, removable does not mean reversible. Those last two parts are where I think most people miss the boat on an archival work. Now you'll see this a lot. A photographer will say that their work is archival because they use archival paper or pigment inks or mounting substrate, etc. cetera. Uh, however, and this work behind me is a perfect example, if any link in that chain is broken, the end result is no longer an archival work of art. For example, in a previous video, when I was mounting a large image like this, I used this pressure sensitive adhesive and one of the viewers asked me, do you ever think about using an archival method of mounting? And it was a great question. And my response was, no, <laughs> I don't. Uh, when I mount my inkjet prints, I don't because this will still last 20, 30 plus years. Uh, and I could always make another one by clicking a button. Uh, when it comes to stuff I do in the dark room, uh, when I start doing platinum palladium prints, things like that on this channel, yes, those I would want to be archival because they're one of a kind. I can't just make another one. Uh, and that's why I wanna make this series of videos. So what we're going to do is this is going to be a multi-part series. I'm going to start with the most archival method that I use. And then in each successive video, we're still going to check the blocks of Chris's definition, but we're going to get a little bit less archival uh, in terms of how easy it is to reverse the process. So in today's video, we're going to be uh, hinging our mat and we're going to be using photo corners to secure our print in place. Uh, and then in future videos, we'll be doing T-hinge, through-hinge, float mount, uh, and even dry mounting. So for today, that's enough jibber jabber. Let's go ahead and talk about the materials that we'll be using. What we'll be doing today is we're going to actually be mounting this image here. Now what this is, is actually a copper plate engraving from 1757. And what that means is they engraved a copper plate and then used it in a press to make these images. And this came from a book. Now, as you could see, when we remove this uh, mat here, which has all this schmutz on it and all this nastiness, you can see that this was not an archival mat because it has actually damaged the paper and has left this discoloration around the edges. And that's what happens when you use non-archival materials. I just wanted to pause real quick because even though the print itself is over 250 years old, it's only been in this mat for about 15 to 20 years. And I think it's worth pointing out just how quickly non-archival materials can permanently damage the quality of the paper. However, this is obviously easily removable. So what I plan to do is I will remove this existing mat. And when I remat it, I'm going to mat just outside the impression line from the original press and go down to a square crop so that we're covering a lot of this ugliness, just leaving the original print in the center. Okay, so let's talk about the materials that we'll be using today. We're going to be using Lineco's archival mounting corners, which are polypropylene, um, and there are two types. One has this notch out, like you see here, which just covers the minimal amount of the print. Now, if you're gonna have your mat tight to the edges of the frame, you're gonna wanna use these. And then they also have full corners where this part won't be a notch out, and it'll hold a little bit more of that print, giving you a little bit more stability. However, I don't have those, so I'm just going to be sticking with these. Even though we have a significant amount of the mat covering, we could have used either set of corners. Additionally, you can make your own corners. Um, 
using archival paper and starch. Outside of the corners, what we're going to need is we're going to be using linen hinging tape to hinge our mat to the um, mounting board. And there's two types of tape that I have here. One is the linen hinging tape, again from Lineco, and then the other is I have um, just framers tape. For the purpose of hinging the mat, I'm okay with using either of these materials. The linen hinging tape is easier to remove. You just use mineral spirits and you can remove it. Whereas for the framers tape, you have to apply heat. However, both are removable and neither will be touching the print. So ultimately it really doesn't matter. You can use either. Sticking with Laneco here, the next product will be these archival weights. And these are fantastic because the fabric surface will not damage the print. And these will be really crucial because what we'll wanna do is when we line up the print, we're gonna put these weights on top of the surface of the print. And that's gonna hold it in place when we peel back the mat so that the print stays exactly where we want it as we go to place those corners. And of course, as with any printing, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we wear gloves. You don't wanna leave your nasty grubby fingerprints all over your work of art. I like to use two sets of gloves. One has the siliconized palm, which is easier for using tools, and the other one is just a pure cotton glove, which I use for handling the prints. Next, what we're going to wanna to use is a burnishing tool. This is what we'll be using to apply pressure to the back of the hinge when we're applying the adhesive, and this is going to make sure that we really drive that adhesive into the fibers. And as always with all things framing and mounting, you're going to want a nice sharp knife, and I really like these Stanley box knives because I'm able to break off the blade and always have a fresh sharp blade, and I have these in two different sizes. But that's enough jibber jabber about the materials, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we have our uh, mat board, and this is actually going to be a double mat. I have the second piece here, and I will attach these uh, later. The reason I opted for two mats is, as you can see in the original print, it's this really nasty um, old <laughs> yellowish color, um, and I did not want to match that yellowish color with a mat of similar color, kind of like what you have here. Um, I wanted something a little bit more modern um, that's going to look nice on the wall in this nice walnut frame. So I opted to go for a nice bright white mat, but that might look a little bit strange placing it directly on the print. So what I've done is I will start with this dark gray mat, which is going to actually border the print. And what I think that'll do is sort of bring out the dark parts of the image a little bit more, give a little bit of contrast, but more importantly, it's gonna separate this white from the actual paper, so it's not gonna be so noticeable, the contrast between those two pieces. So, in order to connect our uh, mounting board to our mat, it's very simple. We're just going to take our framers tape, and I wanna make sure that these are as level as possible and aligned before I start, and I'm going to pull out with the adhesive facing up right about the width of my mat and then again taking a nice sharp blade i'm just going to mark where i want to cut and then i'll pull the tape to the side okay and now i'm going to place this directly on the seam And this is where I will take my burnishing tool and using the rounded edge, I'm just going to press. And you can see where I've pressed, you can see that it gets darker because we're really just driving that adhesive into the mat board. Making sure that it's gonna stay. And then what I like to do is take the tip of the burnishing tool and run it right down the seam. Just to give us a nice crease. And this way, as we go to fold, it's going to land right in the middle. Now, like I said, I'm just going to attach my outer mat so that we have this double mat. And to do that, I use my Scotch tape gun with my acid-free tape and just on the perimeter, I'm going to apply okay. 
Now I'm going to do my best to align this evenly. And once I have it even, I'll apply pressure and I should be wearing gloves. At this part of the process, really I should have been wearing gloves the whole time. But anytime you're gonna to be touching any of the surfaces, you definitely wanna wear gloves. You don't want your grimy, oily fingers to get on the surfaces. So now I have a double mat. It looks nice. And now I'm placing the print, and right now I'm just going to generally line it up. And when we put our mat down, you can see that we're just slightly off-centered. So I'm gonna put my burnishing tool just in the front to hold it up so that I can freely move the print until I get it exactly where I want. That looks good. Just checking the border all the way around. That looks even. So at this point I will take my weights pop them on top of the image so that it does not move and I can open my mat and now we have the location. So as I mentioned these are essentially just envelopes of plastic so you can see we have two separate flaps here and I want the print to sit on top of the first layer of plastic and of course our adhesive is on the bottom. So without moving the print I'm just going to raise the corner and slide in to the corner. Great. Gently press down. All right, and just like that, we have our finished mounted print. Now going back to what I said earlier about archivability, there is nothing that beats photo corners, and here's why. Now that we have our print mounted, if I decide in a few weeks that I wanna change this out, and I very well might, just as a side note, you can see here that I went with the center of the mat rather than going with the optical center, which we'll talk about in the next video. For square crops, I usually like to do that. I usually like to have all the dimensions on every edge be the same. I just think it looks nice. But in the future, I might wanna change out this mat or the frame. And all you would have to do in order to do that is gently lift away from the corners. And now you've removed your print. And that is the completely reversible nature that Chris was talking about in her book. Just gonna make sure these are all aligned. And then we can reinsert. And then what we'll end up doing, of course, is popping this into our frame, applying some glass on the front edge, and then sealing the back of the frame with sealing tape. All right, well, that's gonna do it for part one. Come back for part two, we're gonna be doing a T-hinge mount of this print right here. And again, in that one, I'll talk about how you find the optical center uh, when you're cutting your mat. And then we'll go ahead and get this one mounted using the linen tape and a T-hinge. But hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.